Hey friends, welcome back to Bible Tract Echoes. I'm Micah McCurry, your host. I'm so thankful for the opportunity to speak to you for just a moment here. 1 Kings 19, if you would, in your Bibles. The theme this week is simple. Don't put God in a box. So often we limit God. We limit his impact in our life. We limit his impact in others' lives. And we've learned from 1 Kings 19 that God is individual with his interactions. He speaks to different people different ways at times. Moses with a burning bush and Korah, he got his attention by the earth literally opening up, up and swallowing him. I think it got everyone else's attention as well. But here in 1 Kings 19, we see in verse number 11, God tells Elijah, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And Behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still, small voice. God is individual with his interactions. He gets people's attention in different ways. So don't put God in a box. Here in 1 Kings 19, he speaks to Elijah. And really, honestly, that's how he speaks to us. He speaks in a still small voice. But he can use different things, including, of course, his word to get our attention. Please understand, I'm not talking about extra biblical revelation or anything like that. But we also understand that we shouldn't put God in a box because he has great talent with tools. He wants to use you. He wants to use me. And even though we know our own warts, we know our own failures, we know we know our own quirks, we shave ourselves in the morning, right? We know who we are. But God still wants to use us. In fact, he doesn't just want to, he desperately wants to. Pray ye there for the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into the harvest he desires. Whether you think you're a crooked stick or not, God wants to use you. He's also careful with the clock. Don't put him in a box. The way his timing works might not be the way that we would choose for his timing to work. God should never be put in a box, especially by his own people. We also find in 1 Kings 19, and the context around this passage of Scripture, that God does miracles with minorities. Did you know that? God does miracles with minorities. I'm going to ask you, if you would, to consider this thought right now. We, you and I, are... The minority. You say, but Micah, you don't realize what my ethnicity is, what my background is. Did you know that all of us, if you can put it this way, are the minority? If you would, look at uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter number 2. You are familiar with this passage. I've probably referenced it dozens of times on this program over the last few years. Ephesians 2, verse number 8, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Verse 10, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. But then verse number 11 picks up a thread here. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles, in the flesh. That's what these Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, uh, the, the author, I shouldn't say author, the human pen that God used under the auspices of the Holy Spirit to pen these words, Paul speaking to the Ephesians, wherefore remember that ye, being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called, the Bible says, uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by Hands. It's talking about the, the physical circumcision was a mark for the Jews, but the circumcision of the heart for the saved. Verse number 12, though, that at that time, talking about back then, when you were when you were Gentiles and you were away, you weren't part of God's family. Verse 12, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant 
covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, verse 13, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he, verse 14, is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God. Verse 17, and came and preached peace to you which were far off and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. And it just keeps getting better now. Therefore, verse 19, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom, end of the chapter here, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Think about that. We, you and I, all of that applies to us. Now, you may say, but in America, I, I'm not uh, racially or ethnically, I'm not a minority, or I am a minority. Friend, those minorities, and this isn't a slap at, for, or against the, 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 the inclusiveness of our day and the, maybe the wokeness that proliferates throughout our culture, but can I say kindly that those walls of partition, if I can use the Bible phrase for it, those don't matter near as much as the fact that we were once at enmity with Christ. We were the minority. We were the ones without Christ. We were the ones that were not part of the household of faith. But because of Christ's sacrifice, because of his love for you and for me, friend, God does miracles with minorities. There is no reason whatsoever that you and I should have had access, the access that we have to him. We may have been the foreigner. We may have been on the outside looking in. Think of a little kid outside of a candy shop or a toy shop or those old stories from history. A little girl standing outside of a dress shop just looking at that. Think of that beautiful blue dress kind of a suede texture to it on that mannequin there. Just gorgeous. And she's standing there peering in rags around her feet. Nothing but just a thin coat to cover up with over her, her dress that's, that's ripped to shreds. And she stands there, little girl, looking and imagining what it must be like to be able to own one of those and you know how those old, those stories, those fables go. And of course, maybe as an orphan, later on she's adopted and she gets to go back by that store. And her dear mother and father now adopted, she gets that dress. She gets to live the dream, if you will. She was on the outs, but now she's on the inside. It's nice, it's warm, it's well fed, it's... It's everything that you and I get to enjoy being part of the family of God. We were nothing without him. For without him, I could do nothing. For without him, I'd surely fall. Friend, I wonder if you're listening right now and you don't know him. Maybe you say, I don't know that kind of enjoyment, that kind of peace, that kind of familiarity. Could I introduce you to one who loves you so much he'd like to welcome you in today? God does miracles, and he wants to do one with you today. If you're listening right now and you'd say, how do I get that? I just read in Ephesians 
chapter 2, verse number 8. It was actually the first verse I read just now. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Do you realize we are all sinners? Not a single one of us can be perfect. The Bible, unfortunately, tells us not only there is none righteous, no, not one. No one's perfect, but the wages of sin is death. That's the bad news. But the good news is, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You can't work your way to heaven. If you did, you could work for a hundred years and be as close to perfect as you can, and you still wouldn't gain access. But you don't have to, because Jesus Christ paid the penalty for you and for me. He died, so we don't have to, but because he was 100% man and 100% God, honestly, I can't explain that to you. It has to be taken by faith. Because he was, he had power over life and death. And praise God he rose again and lives now in heaven. And he wants you to go there too. If you will, the Bible says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Maybe you'd like to pray a prayer like this. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I know right now I'm on the outside looking in, but I want to be part of your family. Would you please save me? Would you please Become my Savior. I repent of my sin. And I want to go to heaven. Friend, if you prayed a prayer like that and you meant it, it's not some magical hocus pocus. It's not some mantra. There's no voodoo in these words. No, friend. It's just believing in your heart. It's just confessing to God that you need him more than anything else. He, God is not another God to put on your pantheon. You don't add him to Hinduism or Buddhism. No, he stands alone. If that's you, I'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or maybe you made that decision today, would you text me? Text me at 309-316-7240. Again, that's 309-316-7240. Zero, or the announcer will be on in just a moment, give you a multitude of different ways to contact us. Have a great day for His glory. We'll plan on talking to you soon. Don't put God in a box. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample booklet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. That's 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 130, Dwight, Illinois 60420. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.